And Srija, you had an awesome analogy on that, how you can differentiate that. Yep. Want to repeat it, please? Yeah, for sure. Usually, we've seen that he's an attacker, I'm the defender. We both not are on the same sides all the time, but on this one, we both are friends, like making sure ML and AI are not the same. We keep listening that, you know, as more synonyms, but they're not. So I think this is an analogy I wanted to share is um, AI is like a robo chef. Say you created a robo chef because you wanted him to cook your meals every day, right? It's like you wanted that chef to be uh, have some human intelligence cooking the meals for you. However, um, think of machine learning like a recipe book. As long as you wouldn't supply that recipe book, it wouldn't be able to cook you that meals. So it's more like um, recipe book is like more like algorithms, right? You you would train it so that it would get better and better as mo as you give you more recipes and it gets more good at practice. It cooks you better meals. So it's more like a subset of AI where machine learning is more a subset of AI, but they are not the same. So that's why we wanted to share. And Julian, you want to continue with your AI? Yeah, thank you. And I think that's important because we have once that we have those statistics, which is great and very important. But when it comes to having help in the security operations and even doing administration or evaluation of data, you need to think quite often out of the box. And that's why we said, OK, we need to be more intelligent in the SOC flow. And that's why we started with AI integration. So for sure, we took two of the relatively famous one at the moment of the LLM models. Uh, we used OpenAI and Google Bard in that case, and we integrated them in our common use case within connectors. So what we do with Sora, we provide over 500 different connectors in different applications, meaning in firewalls, our 40 web, for example, but also in, in various other firewalls and products around the world meaning also into the cloud, for example, in Azure or AWS, Google, Oracle. Even SAP, we have integrations uh, right around the world. And also with those integrations, we can just exchange messages. And we prepared there some basics, like, for example, get recommendations for Mitre techniques. It's just, a, it sounds pretty basic, but man, that saves a lot of time. And it's pretty good. And it knows what you need to. And if you do that automatically, you just get an alert and it also assigns you the technique and you get a better review of all the things. In addition to that, what we did, and that's all cool, but want to get a step further. It's your best friend. So what we have, if you maybe remember, that's the alert view. And on the right side, there's a workspace where you can add comments or set up something like a chat communication. And if you write there, at ChatGPT or at OpenAI or at BART, hey, can you explain me that alert? It takes those alert information and gives an explanation. What do you have in front of you? And then you can ask, hey, what is the MITRE technique? It gives you the information. So you, it basically can evaluate you all of those information, can give you help as what should you do as a next step? So how do you proceed? Because, or what is, by the way, the attacker? So... For example, in that case, we have the dragonfly. Who is that? I have no idea. You need more information. You need more details. And that's exactly what you can get with such a chatbot. So in addition to what we have, we have, for example, added a button here, Ask AI. Hey, what is that? Give me some triage of that. And you get a nice response, some more details. In addition, you can query questions back. Give me more. What is that exactly about and what should I do? And you get more details about it back. And that's all great. But remember that whole automation piece is based on so-called playbooks. And those playbooks are usually not growing out of nowhere. Someone has to do that. And that's work. And we also think that could be a bit cooler. So we created a chatbot, which you could say, hey, I need a playbook. It should query my alerts, which I get from our body analyzer in that case, and take those events, or I need a playbook that takes the indicator of compromise and blocks it on a firewall. Can you create me that playbook, please? This yes, sure. It takes those, creates an example, says, is that what you will expect? Say, so, yeah, please generate me the playbook. And what you get is exactly the playbook. And prepared a, a short video for that, um, just to show you how that works. Because, I mean, speaking about that on slides is easy, but let's prove that uh, the demo was recorded on Tuesday. So, and yeah, you know, the demo gods were friendly to us one time. <laughs> we want to don't risk that second time. So what we have here, 
uh, simulate in our scenario of the drones, we have an alert um, regarding the business logic and data layer attack. And on the right side, you can see already some explanations from uh, OpenAI in that case related to that attack. But you get a lot of details and it's pretty helpful. And when you have a look what we want to do to basically fix those steps for our remediation. So what we do is we get an alert, right? We need to extract the details out of that. Then we need to query 40 web. That's what I showed you, right? We get need more information from 40 web, correlate this information and use then those information to create a GitHub issue, send an email to a developer, and then also inform the security team which then has to decide, do we want to block that or not? And that's exactly what we want to do, but not on ourselves. We just ask our friendly SOC AID to create that. And we have that as a playbook generation, or even it can help you writing such playbooks, generate them. And we ask them just friendly, hey, take those alert and extract more details. Sure. That's how it can look like. You want to use that? Is that exactly what you need? Yes, please generate that for me. And what you will get is just a block of those low-code playbook stats, um, which you then can use, and it's ready to use. For sure, I definitely recommend you look over it. Is that really exactly what you want, right? I mean, it, you definitely should review it, but if we go over it, you see it filled out the variable names, it used the right connector, it uses the right step commands, right? For example, extracting client commands using the device ID. In addition to that, it correlates that um, with the 40 web again, and then it updates the alert to have the right details there and fills out the fields, for example, with the alert data, which is the original source. That's one part of that. Um, if we go further, we can just use the chatbot again and add the next block of steps just with the right query. And add it, so okay, we need to open that issue on GitHub. We need to send an email to the developer, but just with content, which is also relevant for the developer. The developer has a totally different scope of information he requires instead of the security operations team. And those information need to be separated. And that's exactly what we can extract also here. Generate those steps, takes just some seconds, and there we go. There we have the steps. We use our connector, which we have for GitHub. We also have connectors to send out emails. Um, just open that GitHub issue, providing a text. Here is an example. You would need to provide, for example, more details like the repository name. But in general, it's already pre-made for you. You can already use it. Um, it uses the description, which it can extract back and forth. Same with the email address. Just fill out the required email address. You see the new GitHub issue got created for you, my friend of developer. Maybe you want to add some, essentially, your security operations. Um, but same for the SOC. There is some more information to even set up the alert um, title that a bad IP address got detected, for example. You can add there some customization for sure. But in general, it's already pre-made with the variable names. And as the last step, we have the decision. But before that, pretty simple. We can just combine those steps and blocks that they run in the chain. And yeah, adding the last step to that, that we want to have the decision block to block that IP address on the firewall or not. I mean, it could be always a decision. We don't want to do that. We get a decision here. Generated, it's a pretty small one, so pretty quick. And with that, we have our playbook ready and can start working on that. So that's, yeah. The catch GPT or any kind of you know, bard, whatever it happens to be, how much and what kind of data is now going from our 40 web uh, uh, Forti logs to the outside world? Because of course, any, any data you put in there is subject to their reuse and make sure that we don't accidentally leak any proprietary information in our logs. Like, it's not a, not a you thing, it's a me thing. What if I'm dumping passwords in my application log and then suddenly I'm looking for inferred playbooks and I'm sending out password information to OpenAI? Definitely a 
bit huge topic. So at the end, you control what you want to send. Okay. So it's up to you what we right now we right now use for that use case uh, using the public versions. Yeah, like this one but, in particular was actually safe. Yeah. Oh. But <laughs> that's gonna, sorry, I didn't know that. That's going to come down to uh, your data residency policy with those providers. So typically, I hope you are not using the public, uh, you know, uh, test version of those services, and that you're. You've, you've discussed your your data residency and data privacy uh, scope with with those providers. Um, so, so I guess as as some follow on from that, I mean, a maybe something to think about if it's not already there is is some default or some options to have obfuscation of some of the private detail before sending that out with the button as part of the product. Actually, maybe a PAI detector in the uh... yep. <laughs> and, and B just to follow on from that a question: Can can I hook this up to my um, Azure OpenAI private instance rather than you know the public OpenAI chat GPT model. That could be another consideration mm -hmm. as well. So right now we support the, the Google Bar, the chat GPT public ones. Yep. We will, the, the, in the, uh, by the way, this feature is not GA right now. Mm -hmm. So that's not for everyone available, but it will also have the privately hosted instances available soon. So cool. when it gets really, it's in there too. Yep. You can choose that, but the second one is right now, no, we have only connectors for those two. But as we are more or less open source on that, we are happy to uh, add more of these connectors to exactly support those, yes. Yep. So it's that, technically okay. possible to, even if you host your own and you have the capacity yep. of adding those machines in your and building your own uh, AI, as long as it has an API, for sure, mm -hmm. it can be uh, used in that. Yes, unfortunately, it's one of those things that in products they find that even though even the most well tuned I've seen legal you know heads yeah. of legal departments they won't fill out a physical waiver for a scavenger hunt unless they do a legal review with three peers. But they will scroll, scroll, scroll. I accept the terms and conditions. They hit go, and like that. As operators, we often don't think, oh, this is going out to the real world. So anyways, yes. I need you to protect me from me. That's all I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> I will press the button and I will use ChatGPT and send proprietary information out there. That's indeed a point. So what we in general allow, for example, uh, I mean, with the sort to right, we're working here with the high confidential information and capabilities. Right. I mean, you can kick out the whole company if you want, if you press the wrong button. Mm -hmm. So we have there an RBAC model. So every single step in action can be controlled by a certain permission. You can, for example, only give a certain group of people the permission to even use that connector if they are aware that they get oh, cool. fired whenever they send out a financial report early. So, um, for, uh, especially. So, you can control that as latest on that level. Yes. Excellent. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. That's, I think it covers just about everything that we had on that one. Yeah, I had, I had one more on the AI assistant. Yeah. And sorry if I missed it, I may have done. But um, have you or are you going to build in some prompt to? help me with whatever the thing might be. So if this particular type of security alert comes through, rather than me just putting in chat, hey, can you help with this, paste it in, you know, maybe you could frame up some prompts that are, you know, going to inform the AI model a bit better and get me a better response rather than the back and forth that you often have to do, you know, five yep. or six times. We're also training on those. Yeah. So for example, with that SOC ID, we trained with thousands of playbooks and we're still not done. Uh, so it's learning continuously on that for sure. Um, yes. So it will be a deeper integration in the future. Definitely. So um, I wanted to add something to your question earlier about sending the logs, right? For example, if you're using a product like FortiWeb where we have uh, PII data, there is a module called information leakage we support where it will delete that information from the log, obfuscate that information, yeah. or cloak the information from the servers. So if you're sending those kind of logs, that's already not there, right? It's it's uh, it's deleted. So you know, if you have to integrate with ChatGPT or something or use SOAR, you're already protected. Yeah. Very good. So when yeah, just so when you say sending logs, is that to like Fortinet support at the moment? That where that'll be obfuscated, or is that? It it would be obf obfuscated on the Forty Web itself, like the attack log um, I showed earlier, where it has op OpenAI machine learning information, right? Yep. So that's what we use to extract what the command is, the attack command is, and then send it to chat GPT in order to get the uh, information about more about what kind of attack it is, right? So, Got it. yeah. Yep. Yes. Any 
There's no question. I think these guys want to fly the drone again, but and on a honeymoon, literally. Still there. <laughs> yeah, that, like I said, the sleeper hit on there. If you, if you could just sub out that API documenter, if you open source that sucker, I'll uh, well, I'm all over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest invention ever. I guess maybe to wrap up, not to not to get into numbers or commercials, but and and there was a lot of integration there, like you showed, especially with the. Uh, with the scenario building out and how it came back and, you know, put the rule in the, in the firewall that was sitting in front. Uh, are most of these components from Fortinet available kind of separately? Like if I wanted the FortiWeb component, can I just go and grab that? Uh, for, like from a commercial standpoint as a customer? Or is this an ecosystem where I need a few of these different components? Like I understand the stories better if I've got, yeah. you know, Thor and, and yeah. firewall and, and such, but... Are they individually available? Yes, they are. Yeah, of course. So, for example, so 40 Gate is a separate product mm -hmm. itself uh, with different levels of what feature sets you exactly need. Same with 40 Web, uh, 40 Sora, the same. What we do for 40 Sora, we, for example, license on user based. So, all the connectors are just there. So, you can use them. Um, yeah, 40 Web. Yeah, we, I mean, it's more a use case, right? Use yeah. case by use case. If it's just application security, then we, uh, you can just get 40 web, or if you want to do both, like databases and application security, then you go 40 gate and 40 web. Yeah, yeah exactly. So we look a bit also, what exactly do we want to secure, right? It's, it's a web app. What makes sense at the end, really, for that? Uh, using Kubernetes or not, that's a bit on depending on what exactly makes sense. Yeah. But for sure, everything is separate. Separate, on its own. yeah. Awesome. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Very There's time. no additional yeah. questions. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Thank you for having us. <laughs> Hundreds of questions, but we know that Stephen's got the microphone. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> if you have any final final thoughts, now would be a good time. Uh, as far as people want to try, is there like a uh, a light version? Like, what are the licensing as far as like people that want to dabble and, and try it out? Is there any way for, you know, is there community licenses and, and such? Or yeah, so uh, for 40 Web and 40 Gate on Azure, we have um, uh, test drives where awesome. you can. It, we are we are paying for your test drive for three hours. You can spin up those labs, play play with it. Uh, that's there. But if you have like an account team, we get like ITF licenses. And for a few of these products on Azure, like for example, 40 Web SaaS has a 14 day free trial. Obviously, we wouldn't bear the networking compute costs, right. but from the 40, 40 net side, the, the, those free licenses for 14 days are available. But the free, so the three hour sandbox is, that's, 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 you, that's on us, yeah. Play space. Very cool. Okay. Yeah. yeah so it's on, um, yeah, it's just more Azure portal. And then there is a test drive uh, marketplace where you can filter 40 web, 40 gate, and download them. Nice. Yeah.